Hello everyone, I'm Riley King, and happy Wednesday, Wednesday, April 27, 2022. And welcome to this Wednesday morning edition of your morning news update right here on the Riley King Radio Network. Let's get started right now. First step, Senate Finance Committee approves narrow vision of House anti-vaccine mandate bill. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. We have never been accused of being flashy, fancy, or cool. I mean, seriously, we named ourselves Booking.com. It's kind of our thing. Helping you book that perfect stay. Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. Today in Concord, a Senate committee signed off on a slimmed-down version of a controversial anti-vaccine mandate bill. House Bill 1604, as approved by the House, would have allowed employees at the state hospital and county nursing homes to opt out of vaccine mandates, which opponents say could have put hundreds of millions of dollars in federal Medicaid funding at risk. The amended bill approved by the Senate Finance Committee today strips out the right of conscience included in the bill and beefs up the religious exemption. With the changes, the House will have to vote on the bill again, but officials say it would no longer result in the defunding of state medical facilities. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. FBI assisting with conquered double homicide. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Do we need to be worried on an everyday basis in our neighborhood? Are we safe? Concord State Representative Chris Schultz says a lack of answers is bringing anxiety to Concord residents. What that says to many of us is we don't exactly know what happened and if the general public should be afraid. We take public safety very seriously in Concord. We are dedicating resources to uh, be more visible in the community. Uh, to make people feel safer. Concord Police Chief Bradley Osgood says there's a visible Concord PD and law enforcement presence in that neighborhood. The Concord Police also patrolling public recreation areas. Now, the Attorney General's office confirming the FBI is helping in the investigation and calling it a top priority. You know, we've been able to provide the information we have, which is that we have no specific information that there's any danger to the public in general uh, at this point in time. Um, but, but be vigilant, and those families are going to have to make those decisions for themselves as to what's best for their family and what they're most comfortable with. Now, community leaders are hoping for conversation. They say they're not completely reassured. This has been a safe community, and I believe it will continue to be, but... Um, I'm eager to hear more. And the AG's office says when it does have more information to provide to the public, it certainly will do so. In the meantime, if anyone has any information related to the case, they're asked to call the Concord Crime Line. That number is 603-226-3100. Reporting live, Grace Feinerman, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Vice President Kamala Harris tests positive for COVID-19. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. Meet Fidelity Spire, a free app that helps you set your goals, prioritize them, and reach them faster. Everything to help you save and invest smarter in one place. Fidelity Spire, more power for your dollar. Vice President Kamala Harris testing positive for COVID. The vice president was vaccinated and twice boosted. Tonight, what we're learning about her condition, we do know she is asymptomatic so far. And when was the last time she had close contact with President Biden? And tonight, here are the eye-opening new numbers. The CDC now estimates that nearly 60% of Americans have had COVID-19 and that 75% of all children and adolescents have had COVID. The vice president getting tested when she arrived at the White House today as part of standard protocol after spending last week in Los Angeles. That's when she learned she was positive. Of course, the next question, how recently was she with the president? ABC's chief White House correspondent, Cecilia Vega, leading us off tonight. Tonight, Vice President Kamala Harris isolating at home after testing positive for COVID. The White House saying she's exhibiting no symptoms and is not considered a close contact to President Biden. They last saw each other in person at the White House Easter egg roll just over a week ago. Harris spent the past week in Los Angeles. 
She returned to the White House this morning, seen here removing her mask as she exited her motorcade. Inside the West Wing, sources tell ABC News, she took a test as part of her regular testing protocol. Soon after that, the positive result, a second test showing the same. She is boosted, actually twice boosted. Right? Um, we have a very, very contagious variant out there. Today, the White House saying precautions are in place to keep President Biden safe, but there are no guarantees. Vice President just caught it. She's twice boosted. Should Americans be prepared for a time when President Biden gets this? Is it just a matter of time that the president could get COVID? I wouldn't say it's just a matter of time, but of course it is possible that the president, like any other American, could get COVID. The bottom line is he is vaccinated and boosted. He is very well protected. He's got very good protocols around him to protect him from getting infected. But there is no 100% anything. This as a new report today from the CDC finds most Americans have been infected by the virus at least once, fueled most recently by that Omicron surge. By February, about 58% of all Americans and 75% of children under 17 had detectable antibodies, but doctors warned that protection may not last. How long does that protection last? And that question hasn't been answered in terms of prior infections. But we do have that information from vaccines that show that they continue to be protective and effective in preventing hospitalization and death. With infections climbing across 35 states and territories, the White House now trying to expand access to the antiviral drug Paxlovid at 40,000 pharmacies and clinics and tested treat sites where people at high risk of complications can get tested and treated with Paxlovid during the same visit. What I am recommending to family and friends is if you get COVID, you should see a provider and make that assessment with your provider. Um, a lot more people are eligible and ben would benefit than I think people think. Mm -hmm. And Cecilia Vega with us live from the White House. Of course, we wish the vice president a quick recovery here. Uh, Cecilia, I know you're tracking another developing headline tonight. Pfizer uh, now asking for authorization of the first booster shot for children 5 to 11. And of course, you reported there the vice president already had her second booster shot available, of course, to American adults over 50. Where do we stand big picture on that? How many adults over 50 have gotten that second booster shot? And any news when the rest of adults might have access to those boosters, given uh, the rising case numbers across the country? Yeah, David, here's what we know right now. We're talking about more than 4 million people over the age of 50 who have gotten that second shot. There could be another round of boosters come this fall, but we don't know which age group yet that will target. But here's this. Officials are hoping that basically this second round of this other round of boosters could be a new and improved type of shot, one that would last longer and could work against future variants. David, as for the vice president, we're told that President Biden called her today to check in. And again, at this hour, she is asymptomatic. Cecilia Vega leading us off here tonight. Cecilia, thanks as always. Okay, there you go on that video and that report. That does it for the morning news update right here on the Riley King Radio Network. Thank you for tuning in and listening. Have a great day, everyone, and goodbye.